I know that this isn't going to make a lot of sense, but hear me out, Despicable Me 4 is just an early 90s comedy. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Hey, hey, no, no. Like Kindergarten Cop. Or, uh, Sister Act. You know, you change your identity, you go into hiding, you're just waiting for the villain to find you, you know that's what's gonna happen, so you just side quest and chill for the first two acts. That's, that's all that happens. Third act is pre-built, pre-made, it's sitting there ready, you know what's gonna happen, but you just chill until it does. And, honestly, more animated films should take cues from this, especially sequels, because so many animated sequels, there's no plot, it's just like, oh, here's the same characters doing a little something different. And I thought Despicable Me 3 and Minions, The Rise of Groot, I thought both of those were awful. So I was expecting this, following them, to be basically unwatchable, but they've actually brought it back to form. Despicable Me 4, Gru moves to the suburbs, sounds like it should just be total crap. And I had fully given up on this franchise, Gru's just, he's just a spy now, just chill, whatever, and he gets this villain, he's logging him up, and then the villain immediately escapes and says he's coming for him. So Gru and his family has to move to the suburbs and just hide out for a while and chill and bring minions with them. Yeah, I gotta say, they brought minions with them. There's only one man in the entire world that's gotten minions, and they brought some minions with them. Most of the minions go off and chill at AVL headquarters and become superheroes, a superhero team. They're super minions now, because having minions as kaiju and villains as kaiju at the end of Minions 2 wasn't enough. So the minions are now superheroes. But, hear me out, again, that sounds crap. It was actually really fun. It was actually really fun. Those scenes were really well done compared to any of the other random minion side quests or minion film plot lines. This was really just great. So yeah, the whole family just goes into witness protection because there's only so many times in these films that they can have their kids getting kidnapped by supervillains before they're just bad parents. And their kid gets kidnapped again. So Lucy gets a job as a hairdresser because they're undercover and she's terrible at it and it's really funny. And then the whole supermarket chase scene was actually just this really random thing that was awesome. And grew. He's... His job is like solar panels, but we never actually see him doing that. He's meant to be selling solar panels. He doesn't actually do that at any point. All he does is interact with his neighbor and then meet the neighbor's kid and then help her become a supervillain. That's all Gru does in this movie. Wow. Wow. What happened in this film? Where did the time go? <laughs> it was just a good time. It just vibed by. And yeah. It really was just random side quests and random sequences that were really fun, really well done. And if you accept the film as just that, which with animated sequels, you know that's what it's going to be, you'll just have a good time with it, I think. At this point, yeah, I, I'm annoyed with Americanized animated sequels, and I was not expecting to like this. I was ready to trash this a little bit, and it's I can't, you know, it's not a work of art, it's not genius, it's not the best film in the franchise or anything like that. It's just fully accepted that it's just going to have fun with it and chill. And that is exactly what it does really successfully. It does a really good job. So the villain is going to find them, okay? We know the villain's going to find them. It's outrageously obvious that the villain is going to find them. And then guess what? After two acts, yep, some random old lady comes in, goes all the Wolverine mode, goes ham on the mass. And, uh, and then the villain finds them while that's happening, just, yeah. <laughs> while they're side questing again. I gotta accept, this franchise is just one of those inevitabilities in life now because it's the sixth entry. And it feels like, oh yeah, all these, all these films, all these franchises, they just get a bunch of entries now, don't they? And to a certain extent, yes, but how many have actually made it to six? You count the two Minions films? That's six films in the last, like, 14 years? That is crazy. Toy Story doesn't have that many entries. Ice Age doesn't have that many entries. Almost nothing actually has that many entries. It is nuts and very impressive. And they'll just get to keep going. And if they keep going like this more than like Despicable Me 3, I'm happy with it. I can't even be annoyed because this was just so much fun. And I'm happy to just see more of them doing the same thing. I am annoyed that they have had a whole ass baby. And Agnes, the youngest child, is still the same size. Time. No, it doesn't matter. Will Ferrell played a funny villain. Joey King was great as her new character. Sofia Vergara was in there randomly as Will Ferrell's girlfriend. It was great as well. Like, the whole thing just worked really well. I can't complain. And I'm giving The Family Man three stars. There are not a lot of animated films that could get away with having 
the hero take a young troubled girl under his wing, helping her throughout the film, changing her, and then she still ends up a villain at the end. She still went to the villain school. How how did it get away with that? I don't 